In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the absolutely incredible feat of engineering, which is the Apple M1 Mac Mini, which Apple released in 2020. So if you are asking yourself things like, is the M1 Mac Mini better than the old Mac Mini? Or should I get the M1 MacBook Air, the M1 MacBook Pro, or the M1 Mac Mini? Or perhaps pushing the boat out and asking a ridiculous question such as, would this £1,500 Mac Mini be better than my £4,000 16 inch i9 MacBook Pro, then this one is just for you as we're gonna answer all of those exact questions and more. If this is your first time here, hi, my name is Pete Matheson. I am an owner of a few different businesses and this YouTube channel is my bit of fun on the side. And on this channel, you can find videos around tech, business, finance, and all of that good stuff in between. So if any of that sounds great, then consider subscribing and um, I massively appreciate it. Like my last video, which will be linked up here and down below that like button, we're talking benchmarks and comparisons with both my workhorse of a laptop, the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which has an i9 processor, 32 gig of memory, two terabytes SSD, and everything else that comes with a 16 inch MacBook Pro. And also comparing it against the brand new M1 MacBook Air as well as, super, super review, the older Intel i5 Mac Mini. Because there are now just a ton of options in Apple's new lineup, and then you may be wondering what the catch is. Because the new M1 range of products are generally cheaper than some of their Intel and Apple equivalents. So in this video, I'm gonna run through the benchmarks, covering all of the areas I can, and help you decide which is best for you. And after I've talked about all those benchmarks, make sure to stay until the end as I've been using this Mac Mini now for a couple of weeks as my main workhorse. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that and my real world use case. Whilst you are watching, let me know two things. Which Apple machine do you want to buy right now? And then secondly, which do you think will win the benchmarks? This M1 Mac Mini, which is one of the cheaper machines that Apple makes, or the top spec over four grand, 16 inch i9, 32 gig of memory and two terabyte SSD machine right here. Let's see if you're right when we reach the end. So let's firstly crack through the benchmarks and we have Cinebench R23 up first, which is a tool that just maxes out the CPU. Now the base spec M1 MacBook Air scored 6479 and then the 16 inch MacBook Pro scored 7302. Well, the M1 Mac Mini scored the top score of 7711 and then the Intel i5 Mac Mini scored 4614, ouch. Now I mentioned this in my last video, but what you can't hear is the fan noise. When running Cinebench, this MacBook Pro kicks the fans right up to their max, 4,900 RPM, CPU temperatures at 86 degrees. Well, the air has no noise as there are no fans. And this new Mac Mini doesn't disappoint either, so it does have an internal fan, but I'll be honest, it was still absolutely silent when running this benchmark. And even the i5 Mac Mini had its fan on, but was still quieter than the 16 inch MacBook Pro. And then one ginormous thing to talk about here, once again, the power consumption. In previous tests, the 16 inch MacBook Pro hits over 50 watts. The M1 Air reached just 7.4 watts, which in itself is just a whopping 148% difference. Well, the M1 Mac Mini hit 12 watts, and then the Intel i5 Mac Mini hit a huge 55 watts. So long story short, if you wanna save money on your electricity, then M1 is the clear winner here by far. And, and also just an FYI, a general day-to-day -day use and even with all of like my normal apps open, the M1 Mac Mini is only really using around one to two watts, which is just insane. Over to GFX Metal to test out the gaming performance because we all know how many people buy a Mac to play games. LOL. And the results here are very interesting. With the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which has a dedicated Radeon 5300 GPU, it gets 88 FPS on one of the specific tests that we picked compared to 70 FPS of the M1 MacBook Air. Well, the M1 Mac Mini reached 80 FPS, and then the Intel i5 Mac Mini reached, uh, wait for it, a whopping 12 FPS. Woohoo! <laughs> so here, of course, the M1 Mac isn't quite up to the graphical standards of the dedicated Radeon 5300M of the 16-inch MacBook Pro, but still it's not far off, and, and for something that consumes around 80% less power, quite something. Okay, then we move over to Geekbench, where the 16-inch MacBook Pro hit 1113 for single core and 6462 for multi core, versus 1726 and 7568 for the Air, which is, yes, a significant difference of 43% on single core and 15 on multi core. But over on the M1 Mac Mini, we get 1736 and 7376, which is pretty on par with the M1 from the MacBook Air. 
And then, just for lols, on the Intel i5 Mac Mini, we get 945 and 4273, which I guess we should expect it. I mean, it's, it's two years old and it's an i5. For the GPU tests in Geekbench, we saw a 47% better result from the 16 inch MacBook Pro over the air. We saw 19258 on the M1 Mac Mini, and then 4763 on the i5 Mac Mini. A quarter of what the M1 Mac Mini can do, pretty awesome. Now, graphics tests are nice and everything, but what about real world web browsing? Well, using the Speedometer website, we can test for how snappy general web browsing performance is. The 16 inch MacBook Pro scored 128. The M1 Air scored a 226. The M1 Mini was 215, but I will say that that test was run with everything, and I mean everything, open on my Mac, which is damn impressive. And then the i5 Mac Mini was 129. Hang on, wait, what? The 2018, i5 Mac Mini got a score one more than the 2019 i9 16-inch MacBook Pro. Wow! For video editing and exporting, first up I use the Bruce X benchmark, which basically brings in a short but fairly complex 5K sequence and then tests the export speeds. The 16-inch MacBook Pro came in at 16 seconds, the M1 Air at 21 seconds, the M1 Mac Mini at 13 seconds, faster than everybody else so far, and then the i5 Mac Mini at over one minute. And here I just stopped testing the i5 Mac Mini as the test just started taking too long and just just don't buy an old Mac Mini, unless you get a really good discount, but just even then, I wouldn't really buy one. I then tried exporting one of my usual YouTube videos with various effects and transitions and color grades and such, much like the one you're watching right now. The 16 inch MacBook Pro was six minutes and 30 seconds. The M1 Air was nine minutes and 30. The M1 Mini was six minutes and 22 seconds, which let's just stop for a minute because it was six minutes and 22 seconds for a machine that costs a third of what the top of the line 16 inch MacBook Pro costs. But what I will add to this is that I exported this on the M1 Mini whilst I had all of these programs open. Notion, Slack, WhatsApp, Messenger, Fantastical, Safari with 23 tabs open, Google Chrome, Microsoft Teams, Calculator, Terminal, OneNote, Messages, Zoom, Todoist, Deliveries, Discord, Indigo, Security Spy, Security Spy, Security Spy, Plex, Sab, NZMB, Sonar, Radar, Adobe CS Cloud, 1Password, Stream Deck. <sighs> and that was everything. So six minutes and 22 seconds beats the 16 inch MacBook Pro. But to do that whilst also having over 25 other applications open, all consuming memory, power and processor and, and everything, that is just incredible. Ooh, and well, there you just have it across all of the benchmarks. And before we get into my real world use of these machines, I want to know which one interests you the most now. Is it the M1 MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro, which I'm yet to test, but should be getting soon, or the M1 Mac Mini, or, 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 or maybe one of the rumored so far unannounced products, which may actually be on the way this year. Okay, so to summarize my thoughts, don't buy a 16 inch MacBook Pro right now, unless you really need that dedicated graphics or the 16 inch screen, because between the poor battery, the fan noise and, and the high price, there just really isn't that many reasons to buy one right now. The M1 Mac Mini is a fantastic option to go with as a gateway to the Apple ecosystem or as a dedicated super powerful machine, which I'll talk about in just a moment. And the M1 Air is the same really. It's such a good option for those wanting you know, a portable, affordable Apple laptop. It is a great recommendation. And the Intel i5 Mac. Again, I don't really see any real reason to buy one unless you can pick up one second hand because just the power consumption and performance just isn't there when you can compare against any of the M1 Mac lineup. So now you've got a good idea on paper about how these perform. Well, what about in the real world? Because we all know how great benchmarks and everything can sound, but, but real world experience can mean so much more. Well, what I've done here is essentially taken my 16 inch MacBook Pro, which I do absolutely everything on. I, I use it for six hours per day, editing videos, web browsing, email, listening to music, watching 4K videos, uh, video calls, just all of the things that you can do with a Mac. But I've also taken my Intel i5 Mac, which I have here, which I had as a dedicated separate machine that ran all of my home automation systems, controls all my lights and heating and security and power and the lawnmower just everything in this house. It also holds my Plex library of TV and movies, my CCTV system, as well as just some other kind of admin tasks. And I kind of set myself a challenge of, can I take both of these machines and just run with one? And the answer to that question is, well, yes. And actually really, really well. I'm genuinely surprised 
this Mac Mini, which I have behind me because I'm actually using it, is now the only machine that I use. And for all of the above, and I've yet to see it skip a beat or slow down or, or anything really. The only issues I have seen, which are worth addressing of course, is first that when you connect anything into the USB-A ports on the back of the Mac Mini, it completely screws up the onboard Bluetooth to the point where my mouse and keyboard will just skip around and basically just stops you using anything on the Mac until you disconnect those USB-A devices. Now, I believe there is a software fix coming from Apple soon, though, honestly, I wouldn't really hold my breath because I know it's been outstanding for a long time and it didn't actually just affect these M1 Macs. It was also affecting the, you know, the older generation Intel Mac minis. But thankfully, I've been able to work around that for me by connecting my CalDigit T TS3, T3S, it'll be down below, uh, the dock, and just use all of the USB-A's on there instead. Link in the description for one of those. And also, just following on from a video I made around this, the Samsung G9 screen, I am getting the full resolution, 120 hertz, through the CalDigit dock, something I couldn't get for whatever reason from my 16 inch MacBook Pro. The only other negatives I have around the M1 Mac mini and actually it applies to the whole M1 Mac range is this software support. I am still waiting on some specific you know, video editing plugins to work on the M1 processor. But the one thing that really does grind my gears is Google File Stream, which at the time of this video does not work on any of the M1 Macs. It will install, but you just can't sign in and actually use it. Now you can use Google Drive, which I don't want to because file stream is actually what I need. And Google have said that they have a fixed version coming, supposedly in April, 2021. But I've also seen other suggestions that it could be more towards like the end of 2021, which is just incredible if, if that's true. But yeah, other than those issues, it's been pretty smooth sailing. I mean, Microsoft 365 apps will work just fine. The Adobe apps run okay. Uh, yes, perhaps they're a little slow, but they are already releasing beta M1 compatible versions, which do perform well. And most software is now getting an M1 release to fully support the Apple Silicon processors. But as always, I would recommend you check with any specific software before purchasing. Now, I know that obviously I don't get the portability of the 16 inch MacBook Pro, but what I have done here is go and buy a higher spec M1 MacBook Air, which should be here in a few days time, hopefully, so that I can run those same benchmarks on all of those two if you want me to. So just comment below if that's something you're into. But even with buying a technically top spec M1 Mac Mini and technically top spec M1 MacBook Air, this combo still comes in way, way underneath the cost of just the 16 inch MacBook Pro by itself. So for me, it's it's just a no brainer. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then why not take a look at this video where I check out the new iPad Air versus the iPad Pro or for something different, my review of these stupidly expensive Apple AirPods Max headphones. Please do subscribe to this channel for more videos. Give the video a thumbs up if you did, or if you didn't, let me know how I can make your life feel better by leaving a comment down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.